Astrophotographers know that your telescope mount is the cornerstone of your entire deep sky astrophotography setup. It accurately follows the apparent motion of the night sky and allows you to take long exposure photos. An equatorial telescope mount is one of the first pieces of equipment you need and investing in a high quality tracking platform is critical. Thankfully, in 2024, there are some fantastic options to choose from, including a new type of technology known as strain wave drive or strain wave gearing. I recently polled the Astro Backyard Facebook group to see which telescope mounts they're currently using. I was amazed at how many people have switched to a strain wave mount, specifically the ZWO AM5. So why is the AM5 so popular in the astrophotography community? Well, it's all about convenience and reliability. While I know that the telescope companies like to boast about the incredible tracking accuracy and advanced functions of their high-end mounts, the average user just wants a product that is quick to set up and works seamlessly without headaches. The nature of a hobby that requires a clear night sky means that you need to react to the weather and a clear night doesn't always happen at a convenient time. An astrophotography mount that allows you to get up and running quickly and accurately means more imaging time. While I still use my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro for a lot of astrophotography projects throughout the year, the AM5 comes out of the garage more often. I can quickly polar align the mount using the ASI Air polar alignment tool and be on my way. The small form factor and lack of a counterweight for loads up to 28 pounds mean that this thing can travel. In fact, I've already traveled to Oklahoma for the Okitex Star Party and Florida for the Winter Star Party with my AM5 nestled safely in my personal item bag on an airplane. It still amazes me that I can fly with deep sky astrophotography gear. Now I understand that users of larger telescopes will need a traditional German equatorial telescope mount with counterweights. But for compact refractor lovers like myself, a strain wave drive mount like this is the perfect option for at home and on the road. Strain wave gearing doesn't use worm gears the way that a traditional German equatorial mount does. They are unique in the way that they can operate without counterweights while still handling moderately sized loads. Another benefit to strain wave mounts is that they have little to no backlash. However, they do suffer from periodic error which will need to be corrected using auto guiding. So are strain wave drive mounts better? The answer, no. They are not any better at tracking the night sky than a traditional equatorial mount. In fact, I think they might even be a little worse. But with auto guiding, it's a non-issue. I feel like these days, the amateur astrophotographer is quite comfortable with the concept of auto guiding. So this necessary step for precise tracking is not an issue for most people. As long as the tripod underneath the strain wave mount is secure and stable, you can enjoy counterweightless astrophotography. Well, it's clear that the vast majority of the amateur astrophotography community has welcomed the ZWO AM5 with open arms, it's nice to have other options. The AM5 is not the only equatorial strain wave drive mount on the market. Ioptron, Pegasus Astro, and even Skywatcher have now released strain wave drive mounts. The Ioptron HAE29 goes head to head with the AM5, offering a 28 pound payload capacity in a package that only weighs eight pounds. You can control this mount using an image capture software like Nina on a mini PC or your laptop if you're not a fan of the ASI Air experience. The Pegasus Astro NYX 101 is in a class above the AM5 with a larger maximum payload capacity. It can hold 44 pounds without the use of a counterweight, but it also comes at a higher price tag than the AM5 in comparable strain wave mounts. Ioptron has an option in this class as well, the HAE 43. I'm only brushing the surface of all of the strain wave drive mounts out there now. Skywatcher recently announced their new line of strain wave drive mounts, the Wave 100i and the Wave 150i. These strain wave mounts add some handy new features features like a cable management system and the ability to use your existing SynScan hand controller to control the mount. They sit in slightly a different spot than the AM3 and the AM5. The 100i is a little bit heavier and can handle a little bit more weight than the AM3 and it's a little bit more expensive as well. The 100i can handle 22 pounds of equipment without the use of a counterweight. 
For those that need a little bit more payload capacity, the 150i can handle 33 pounds of gear without the use of a counterweight. With more capability, this one sits a little bit higher in price than the comparable AM5 and the HAE29. I had a chance to see the Wave 150i in action at the Northeast Astronomy Forum in New York recently. I think that a lot of existing Skywatcher EQ6R Pro owners will end up switching to the Wave 150i when they're ready. I talked to Kevin at Skywatcher in his booth to talk a little bit more about the new Wave mounts. What makes the new Wave strain wave drive mounts different from the other options that are currently available? So the smaller one, the Wave 100 back over here has the tandem capability, so they can do Altaz and Equatorial, uh, but you get the side-by-side -side plate that comes with it, so you can run two telescopes, which is perfect for outreach because it's so light and small. It's easy to take the field. Um, and then for our imagers, such as yourself, uh, the larger Wave 150 model has the cable management built into the saddle over here. It uh, routes out track, so it's basically like the 350 or your EQ8, where you can plug into the saddle and route all your cables out the back. And then another unique feature is we have the clutch assembly, so you can actually balance both of the axes to get real precise when you're pushing the heavy duty. And then we also have steel tripod options that will be available for max rigidity on them. Um, and then another thing for the visual people out there, uh, we have our optional hand controller. So you don't need a box or anything, you just tactile hand controller, or you can use the Wi-Fi that's built in with the app. So even though a strain wave mount doesn't track more accurately than a traditional German equatorial mount, they nearly match their performance in a package half its size. And that is something to be excited about. This cuts down on setup time and overall weight. And these are two huge elements of astrophotography. The one thing that I did find a little bit odd in the documentation for the AM5 is that it lists the maximum practical focal length as 900 millimeters for a strain wave mount. I haven't heard much of this limitation in the real world at all. And I know that a lot of people are mounting their eight inch SCTs on an AM5 and getting successful images. So I don't know if this is a rule of thumb or what your experience is with that. Personally, I've successfully used the AM5 for deep sky imaging on refractor telescopes in the 500 to 800 millimeter range, and they've been spot on. The following image of the Triangulum Galaxy was captured using a 115 millimeter refractor on the AM5. As you can see, the tracking looks perfect, and this mount gets a lot of use. So, while I don't feel that there's an immediate need to upgrade your existing German equatorial mount for a strain wave design, it's clear that the astronomy manufacturers are all in on this new technology. The strain wave design has clear advantages in terms of setup time, portability, and ease of use. It makes an attractive option for those looking to upgrade their current telescope mount or those getting into the hobby for the first time. I've personally had a great experience with the AM3 and AM5 strain wave mounts from ZWO and have taken some of my best images on these. I now find myself recommending a ZWO AM5 over a traditional equatorial mount for beginners. I'm really glad to see Skywatcher enter the strain wave drive mount revolution and that there are so many other options available for you. So I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this technology, the strain wave drive mounts, if you've already had success with one or if you're thinking about upgrading. Until next time, clear skies.